If you have logged into high level, gone to the calendar section, opened it up and just been like, wow, this is amazing. I understand absolutely everything here. I really want to congratulate you because you're probably the only person in the world to ever achieve that. So I was sitting there thinking one day, you know what? I really think it's time for a calendar tutorial. So let's get into it. All right, so depending on when you're watching this, you're actually not going to see a lot of the options I'm going to show you in this video because they haven't come officially live yet. So what you need to do is go to the sub account that you're trying to enable this in, go to settings and then labs here on the bottom left. And once you're there, you're going to want to come in and toggle on everything here. So my staff, appointment booking widget, payment and forms, time zone update for calendar appointments, anything else that's not on for you here should be turned on because if it's not, again, you're not going to have the full functionality of calendars. And just a quick note, it's always nice to come in here and just get early access to things before they roll out officially. So I come in here and check things periodically anyway. Beautiful. Now that we've done that, we'll come back here to calendars and you can see that we have service menu here and rooms and equipments as well have all been added. So we know that work. If rooms and equipments aren't showing up for you, go ahead and go to preferences, account preference, and you can toggle those on right here. Okay. Now we have absolutely everything on when it comes to calendars. So we can actually go through and look at each one of the types. Now this is where most people get confused and overwhelmed when I hit this create calendar button. Woo, that is a lot of calendars. Luckily, you've got me here to explain this in simple terms for you. So first of all, we have service calendars and those look like this. They allow people to book services, rooms, or pieces of equipment inside of a particular business. So for example, a hair salon in this case could have a service for dyeing your hair, but also for getting your hair cut or whatever it is that people do with their hair. Next up, we have the simple calendar, which most people will be used to. This is basically like Calendly. You have one link, which allows a simple single meeting type on a calendar tied to your availability. Next up, we've got the round robin calendar, and this one can get a little bit confusing. So let's pull up an example of how this one works. So you can see here, I've got my round robin example pulled up and I've added two team members to this, Jay Dinklage Morgoon and Keaton Walker. And right now this is set to optimize for availability, but I have the option to set it to optimize for equal distribution. So the way this one works is you plug multiple people's availability into one calendar. And then depending on when the person books, it will go to one of those people, but not all of them. But if you're in a situation where everybody pretty much has the same availability, you just want to cycle the sales appointments through different reps or whatever it is you're setting up, then that would be optimized for equal distribution. On the optimized for availability side, you can set each of these people to high, medium, or low priority so that if their schedules do overlap, that the calendar knows where to put them. Awesome. That brings us to class booking. And this is where you would have multiple people booking into one event, like a webinar or a class. And that is followed by our last type here, which is collective booking, which is very similar to round robin, except instead of going from person to person, Person, everybody's availability has to match up to be able to book on a spot in a collective booking calendar. And here's a quick look at what collective booking looks like on the back end. So we need to add multiple team members. And once those team members are added, there will be a primary owner of the calendar, which we can change, but that owner will determine the location of the meeting and you can switch it here if you need to. More info on how to set this meeting location later in the video. All right, so before I show you how to actually set up the calendar, don't worry, it won't take too long. I wanna show you all of these tabs here and how to use them. So groups, this is going to be like on Calendly where you can set up hey, a 15 minute, a 30 minute, a 45 minute meeting. You can set up multiple simple calendars and then put them into a group so for example, this group is the eyebrows group and it has two calendars within it. Then you can see we've got nails, hair, and wax. So nails, two, hair has two that we can see. And this is not actually a group here, but this is a group of groups. And that's what's called the service menu here. But in order to create the service menu, we first need a group. And in order for the group to actually have anything in it, we need to create a calendar or two to put in it. And then these rooms and equipments are very interesting because you create a room and then you associate that with a particular service. So as as you can see here, it says you can select multiple service calendars to associate with rooms. You describe what the room is, you add the total capacity for the room, and then you select which service calendar it's connected to. Or same thing with equipment, you can come in here and add the total quantity of what you want to rent out, any that are out of service, and then select the calendar which you want to connect them to. All right, phew, I know this is a lot, but this is what makes High Level so amazing. They think of absolutely every single use case. In fact, at the summit this past year, one of the co-founders of High Level, Varun, told a really cool story about how they actually came up with rooms and equipment because somebody needed a very specific use case with calendars and they actually built that for them and then ended up rolling that out for everybody and they did it within like 24 hours. Anyway, now let's actually show you how to set one of these up. The most complicated setup by far is going to be the service calendar. So let's do that first. We'll call this the example service calendar. We're going to say that this is J. Dinklage Morgoon's service that he gives and the custom URL, we're going to say example nails. Let's say this is for nails and the duration is going to be 
45 minutes. So when I hit confirm, that gives me a link where I can like specifically just send this. I don't have to embed it in a funnel or a website or anything. I can just send this specifically, but obviously the link doesn't look super amazing. So now let's go to our service example here. And what we could do in this case with these advanced settings that it's now giving us is add a logo description, select which group this is going to go into. So this would be our nails group, create the invite title. So this would be contact name, nail appointment, assign it to a team member for service calendars. This is required. It's not required on all of them. And you can select the event color here. So we'll go ahead and hit save. And this is where it starts to get really interesting. We've got a service duration of 45 minutes. Then we can add buffer time. So how much time between appointments do we need? Minimum scheduling notice, and then the date range, how many days, weeks, or months in advance can people schedule? And we can go ahead and set that here. Alrighty. Next we've got forms and payments. So there's a default form that's going to pop up inside of every calendar, but you can also create a custom form inside of sites that you then connect to this particular calendar with specific questions that you want to ask. But by default, it's going to be first name, last name, email, phone, and notes, which most people need. But again, if you want custom questions asked there, that's how you implement that. Next up, pre-populate fields, sticky contacts. I really like this one, especially if you've already had them fill something out. So if high level recognizes this person from earlier, it's going to pre-fill their name, phone, and email for them, which saves time and it's going to get you more bookings likely. So I always like to turn that on. Consent checkbox is very important, especially with the new A2P10 DLC regulations. And then this confirmation thing is super important because it's going to show this default message, which a lot of people don't want this shown because they don't call to confirm. So definitely make sure you change this because this contact method thing isn't even a real merge field. You can also just redirect people to a website if that's a little bit easier for you, or just change the default and say, thanks for your appointment request. If you're running Facebook ads and you want this to trigger as an event, you can plug in your pixel ID here and automatically track it. Beautiful, beautiful feature from high level here. Moving on, now we're on notifications and additional options here. So by default, there's an acknowledgement email spun up, but it won't send to anyone unless you click here and actually assign it. And on this additional emails, you can add those in. You can also do this via a workflow if you prefer not to have it here in the actual calendar settings. Next up, we have these two options. Allow Google Calendar to send invitation or update emails to attendees. Definitely click this because Google is going to get delivered 100% of the time. You definitely want that delivering in case yours doesn't for some reason. And then assign contacts that are prospective service staff members each time an appointment is booked. This one's helpful, especially if you've got multiple people using high level texting back and forth with them, it's going to be assigned to them, pop up as a notification and everything will work beautifully there. Once you click that, the skip assigning contact will also pop up, which you probably want to click. If you want to allow reschedules and appointments, you can. And then in the additional notes, you can add anything that you want the person to know about the appointment or have access to inside of the notes. And this will pop up inside of the actual calendar event. All right, next up, we have the service cover image, which will pop up on this part of the calendar once you have it set up. And what's cool here is you can actually search a free library called Unsplash directly inside of high level here. So I'll just search nails and select Unsplash. This one looks great. Nice. Then we can change the color, the background color, the button text, the calendar titles, descriptions, calendar details, etc. If we have rooms and equipments for this particular service, then we would come here and add them, but we don't have any right now. So we'll just leave that. And now we can go ahead and preview this beautiful calendar, our service example calendar. We haven't uploaded the logo, but if it was here, it would be above this example service calendar. I hit select here and it's booking here. So the reason this service cover image isn't showing up yet is because this isn't in a group. So I'll go ahead and add that next and this will all come full circle. Beautiful. I'll hit close there. Groups. We'll hit create group and we're going to call this the nails group. And we have the option to select from Neo or the classic view. I'll show you examples of what each of those look on the screen right now and then create the group URL, which is going to be nails. Great. So now that that's created, we need to come back here real quick and add this calendar to that group. So we'll add nails there. Perfect. Go ahead and close this. Then we can see we have one calendar in our nails group. Now we'll go to service menu, add a service menu. And this is going to be our nail spa menu. So maybe be here we're doing nails and we're doing pedicures so this is just going to be our nail calendar inside of the nail spa menu do nail spa here great we'll add the service url consent checkbox go ahead and get rid of this confirmation text that we talked about earlier then we'll select the services very easy to select nails perfect and then we would arrange our services if we had the pedicure as well let's say set up we'll hit save and let's go ahead and 
copy this permanent link and take a look at what this looks like now. Beautiful. So just like that, we've built this. I can book. I can select how many people are coming. I haven't set this up properly, so it's just going to be just me for now. But if multiple people want to book at the same time, that's totally fine. You can set that up within the calendar and then you hit confirm and then you find the date time and you can add payment to this form and then they can go ahead and schedule here. All right, very quickly before we close out here, I need to show you a couple more important things when it comes to setting up these calendars that will be unique. Let's start with the simple calendar. Everything's pretty much the exact same here, except in simple calendars, you won't be able to set unique Zoom meeting or Google Meet links with each person that schedules using your calendar. The only option you're going to have here is to paste your default Zoom link and everyone will get the same link. So if they join at a different time, they could end up popping into your Zoom meeting. Not always a fun experience when that happens. So if you want to avoid that, you're going to have to set up a round robin calendar. Even though you'll be the only round robin robining inside of that calendar, this is the way that you have to do it. So the way this works is once you've created your round robin calendar, you just create one person inside of that calendar and you can set them to high priority, medium or low priority. It doesn't matter since they're the only person. And then you will add one of the options for the meeting that you see on the screen here. So Zoom, Google Meet, phone or full address. Phone options will just populate what's inside of the account. Google Meet and Zoom need to be set up within the My Profile section here on the side of your screen. I'll show you how to do that now. So here in My Profile, you'll find User Availability listed. You go ahead and hit Connect Zoom. I'm going to prompt you to go to your Zoom account, log in, and then you'll get connected. You can also set your individual available hours so that those translate across every single calendar, even if the calendar's availability is a little bit different. And if you want the calendar to automatically update availability based Based on what you add to your own Google or Outlook or iCal, then you're going to need to set that up inside of calendar configuration still here in my profile. If you don't see the option to integrate here, you're going to need to go to integrations on the bottom left and make sure that you connect your Google account here. Then that option should show up inside of my profile. As for class and collective booking, I pointed out a few differences about them earlier, so you can check back in the video if you need to refresh on those. Amazing. Thank you so much for tuning into this video about how to create calendars and go high level. I hope you're less confused than you were at the start. For me, that would be a win. If if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my full tutorial. It's one hour long and tons of people have enjoyed it. So I'll see you there. Take care.